Good afternoon and welcome. I'm Patty Stroman and I have the joy of serving as Administrator of Church of the Ascension and President of Ascension Catholic Academy, which is comprised of Ascension Catholic School, St. John Paul II Catholic School in Northeast Minneapolis, and St. Peter Claver School in the Rondo neighborhood of St. Paul. It's, um, it's just an honor to be with all of you today in this sacred space. We gather here at Church of the Ascension, which has been in the north side of Minneapolis for 131 years. I know, isn't that amazing? And during those 131 years, uh, the parish and the school have had the charism and the gift of gathering people from the neighborhood to form community, to build the kingdom of God. And we gather today on this sacred day as we remember, we listen, and we believe. And we gather together, it's so important, those of us from Ascension, from the University of St. Thomas, and from Cristo Rey High School, to form community, to stand in the face of racism, and to stand in the face of violence, and to say, we do remember, we will listen, and we will believe in a future full of hope. We're doing that today primarily through the voices of our beloved young people. We're working uh, diligently here at Ascension, and I know the University of St. Thomas and Cristo Rey is as well, to listen to voice, to develop choice and agency for our beloved scholars and their families, so what better way to do that today than to gather in prayer and to listen to the voices of some of our beloved scholars. So welcome, and I'd like to introduce you to Father Dale Kurogi. He's pastor of Church of the Ascension and executive director of Ascension Catholic Academy, and he'll gather us in prayer. Good afternoon, friends. I add my welcome, of course, to that of uh, Patty. And it's such a privilege to welcome all of you, and especially great to see our scholars with us today. May 25th, 2020. We remember George Floyd and Darnella Frazier in the same place at the same time. Nine minutes and 29 seconds. A black man killed by white police. Cause of death, a knee to the neck. And the brutal history of white racism and supremacy that infects our society, our minds, our hearts and bodies. Today we remember what Mr. Floyd said, I can't breathe. May 25th, 2021, we listen. We come together, we leave behind our aloneness and turn toward one another. We dare to speak and dare to listen. Holy Spirit, anoint the voices of those who courageously speak today. Anoint the ears of all who listen. Open the ears of our hearts. Holy Spirit of Pentecost, blow wide open those hearts and ears, our eyes and minds. May 25th, 2022, May 25th, 2023, May 25th, 2024, we believe. Continue to blow us wide open with your spirit, O Lord, as we labor to take down systems of racism and white supremacy that withhold your gifts of land and education and employment and freedom and voice and votes 
from your beloved children. At the first Pentecost, you breathed your spirit on your disciples, giving them words and hearts and courage. Without you, O oh God, we can't breathe. But with your breath, O oh God, and the inspiration of so many courageous women and men, young and old, of every country and color, our heroes and sheroes, we choose to believe in transformation, in conversion, in miracles, in change. We believe in you. We we ask you to breathe on us and bless us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And so I'd welcome Mr. Benito uh, Matias, our esteemed principal uh, here at Ascension Catholic School. Mr. Matias. I even got an applause. How about that? <laughs> well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming out. As uh, Father Dale said, uh, I have the privilege of serving as the principal here at Ascension Catholic School, and I have the honor today of introducing our panel. Dr. Yuhuru Williams is an American academic, author, and activist. Dr. Williams is a distinguished university chair and professor of history and founding director of the Racial Justice Initiative at the University of St. Thomas. He was previously the Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences at the University of St. Thomas. And we'd like to thank you, Dr. Williams, for facilitating our conversation here today uh, with our wonderful panelists. And we have with us from Ascension Catholic School, Mylia Holbrook. And I know we have Diamond and Khadija from Cristo Rey. So please, Dr. Williams, Mylia, Diamond and Khadija, if you would please come up uh, to the stage and I will get out of the way. Thank you for being here today. Good afternoon, everyone. The purpose of today's program is to center young voices because ultimately when we talk about trauma that impacts communities, it's the young that often bear the greatest scars from that trauma. And so we wanted to take some time today, a year removed from the killing of George Floyd, to allow these young voices to come forward and to share with you their hopes and aspirations for us as a community going forward. Centered on the themes that Patty shared with you this morning. Because now more than ever, we need to listen, we need to remember, and ultimately we need to believe. And as a community of believers, we can take great inspiration from our young people and what they can share with us in this moment. And so I'd like to invite first our scholar from Ascension to address us with her words. And she'll be followed by our two scholars from Cristo Rey. I'm sorry, I'm short. Um, I would like to say this situation, I think, I'm not gonna say it's blown out of proportion, but I think our community was destroyed as most of you guys know and have seen. And I feel like it shouldn't happen over and over again. It shouldn't be something repeated in our community. And for us to see this happen all the time, almost every other month, it's sad. And it shouldn't be sad and it shouldn't, be something that's happening. I don't think we should have conflict with the police in general in the first place when they're supposed to be the ones protecting us. But I just feel like this is an unnecessary conversation that we should be having because this shouldn't be happening in the first place. Hi everyone, I am Diamond from Crystal Ray and I just want to say that it should have happened. I'm not saying that George Floyd should have died, but I feel like with the aftermath and a year later, it's a very eye-opening event. I feel like 
now is the time for us to have these type of conversations and be aware of what's really happening within our communities. It's time for us minorities to step up and come together instead of fighting against which minority has more conflict. I think George Floyd and the rest of the family would be very proud to know that we are here and here for him and that we also need to just be here together as a community. I think, yeah, pretty much it. <laughs> Hello, um, my name is Khadija. Um, when I think about the situation that happened a year ago, I feel super traumatic about it because that morning when I woke up, I couldn't think, I couldn't let myself just go about the day without really taking a step back to really figure out why these things are happening to us. As black people, we shouldn't have to ask for our lives to be free as anybody else we should already have that freedom to just breathe to just live every day like everybody else so i always think about the younger folks because if we're already going through these things then what are my younger siblings going to look at when they grow up what are they going to think about they're always going to be traumatic they're always going to have you know these mental issues that are always rising in our communities and we shouldn't have to deal with those things so as a community, we should be coming together to talk about the ways that we can help build our communities up. Yes, as minorities, we shouldn't have to worry about if my trauma is way more worse than the other person's trauma because we're all going through the same struggles. But if we come together, we're way more powerful. So in my last few words, I guess, um, I just wanna say keep the hope because we're the future. And if we lose hope now, then there's no, no hope for the younger folks. So thank you. So I'm going to engage these young people in conversation for just a few minutes. I think we'll be able to make that work. And ask them a few questions about uh, the themes that came up. And I wanna begin because all of you emphasize the importance of youth and thinking about young people in particular. And again, I wanna thank you for courageously sharing your, your stories today. But as you think about where you are in this moment and you think about the young scholars that we have uh, gathered today, what words would you offer for inspiration for them in this moment? What should this community be thinking about in terms of supporting young people in particular? What specific advice could you give to all of us on how we can be present to help young people navigate these difficult times? We'll start with you, Khadija. Um, I think that one way that we can be there for the young people is by first identifying if they have you know, mental problems that um, rise as these issues continue to happen. So. First of all, they shouldn't have to continue to happen because that's what's con continuously given us, you know, these mental breakdowns and stuff. And I know like I had gone through mental issues when the situation arised and I couldn't talk to anyone, especially my family, because they don't necessarily understand what me as a young kid is going through. And so having my friends with me, especially Diamond and my other friend, I was able to communicate with them because they understood every single thing that happened. So as older folks, I would say, ask us every day, how are you doing? Not necessarily the, oh, I'm okay, because that's the plain um, answer that we give you, but really, how are you doing deep down? Like, I'm not okay most of the time, but I'm gonna show it that I'm okay but that's necessarily not what's going on with me, you know? So I want you to continuously ask me, how are you doing? Let me tell you, let me explain myself to you, you know? Um, I think for the youth, the only thing I can say is be there for each other. Understand that we are all going through it as a community and don't be afraid to tell each other the truth. If you feel some type of way, tell the truth, and then do something about it. Don't sit here and just be like, well, there's nothing I can do about it, because there is something you can do. Make a group where you can talk to each other about it. Me and Khadija are the founders of the BSU at our school. We felt like it was time for a BSU to happen, for a safe place for our black students, and that's what we did. Don't be afraid to actually do something that you want to do. 
And as for situations like this, speak up. Don't let the older generation say it is what it is because it's not what it is. We can do better and we can strive to do better if we really want. Just be a community that is there for each other. The youth and the generation of 2021 is a, I believe it's the strongest generation we've had since America has started. And we have the power and the truth to do exactly what we need to do to change the world. Um, I agree with both of y'all. I just want to say that first. Um, second, I also agree, but I think there should be other factors that go into that. Like whether it's having a safe place with people you don't even know, because sometimes you will be open to share things with strangers than your best friend. I think we should all be able to talk to each other. And if there's something wrong, try to fix it together, not alone and separate. So if you're feeling mentally something's wrong, there should be an outlet where you can go and you can be free or be yourself. Um, I think definitely during COVID, since it happened during COVID, everybody was like on edge and they took everything to social media. And there was so many things going on in social media that you didn't know who to listen to, whether it was one side or the other side. But I feel like maybe social media kind of made it seem one way when it was actually something else that was going on. And maybe there should be a safe place on social media, maybe, where you can talk to others. It's a, it's a great point. And I want to ask all of you, thank you, because you all raise great points. But I want to talk specifically about faith, because Patty Stroman began by saying, this is a sacred day, not necessarily because George Floyd lost his life today, but because ultimately we have to remember that it wasn't just the death of George Floyd, it was the fact that 26 million people saw what happened and responded, and they voted with their feet for freedom. That they were willing to not just protest in the streets, but to do some things that all of you have done, to start to focus on how we can make policy change, to write poetry that reflects the feelings of a community, to start organizations, to really be present and to try to push our faith leaders, our politicians, um, our elected officials to be responsive to the needs of community. But I wanna talk about faith with you specifically because we are, um, even though we're ecumenical, a Catholic community. And so when we think about faith in moments like this, what does that mean to you? What has, what foundations um, do you think that Cristo Rey and Ascension have set for you and what more do we need as a faith community to understand the significance of faith in this moment? And we'll start in the opposite direction this time. Um, I think the relationship with God or our relationship with God technically during this hard time was definitely needed because I felt like if I didn't have God at that point, I don't know where I would be right now, technically. But I think your faith it can give you some encouragement. Like, I want to do better for God. It doesn't make you want to be, oh, since I don't have God, I just don't care anymore. I'm not saying that. But since you have faith, you have motivation, you have something to cheer you up, I guess. Something to distract you from doing the things that you would do and do bad. Okay, I just want to say, when this first happened, I feel like, or just in general, anything bad happens, the first thing I tend to do that I know is wrong is I question God. Why did this happen? Why did it have to happen today? Why is it this person? Why couldn't it be that person? And then I always take a step back and realize that God has a plan for all of us. And if this event happened for our plan to go the way it should be, then so be it. God will always have a plan for us, whether we like it or not, and we just have to go with it. Um, I would say I'm Muslim, so I'm not a part of, you know, the Christian or Catholic community. But um, like Diamond mentioned, when things happen, sometimes I do question God as to, well, why is this happening? Why do we have to go through these things every single time? And I really got to understand that the more times that I pray, the more I would understand why these things are happening. And yes, we do have to go through them so that way we can grow. We do have to know you know, the hatred that goes on within other people for us to understand our place in society. And so for, 
for Crystal Ray, what we do is have mass most of the time. And um, that's like a very sacred moment for us to come together as a community to build ourselves in, in um, togetherness, I guess. And I really appreciate that because I don't always get that because I'm going to school all the time. So I don't get to do that with um, my Muslim congregation. But um, having that at school really helps me just focus myself into that space of like, okay, I need to take a break from everything that's happening and just focus on God. Thank you, Khadija. I just have to call this out. We don't have a lot of time yet, but we have three dynamic young women up here. Can I just call that out? Can I also call out that we have these three dynamic young women who are articulate, um, who are able to convey with such conviction what they're feeling in this moment to inspire us. And they're doing that in spite of navigating their own trauma. And so I also want to just call attention to that. Khadija, last night we were in conversation and you shared your story and you talked specifically. And I'm glad you brought up the fact um, you said, look, I'm Muslim. But at the end of the day, you know, I came from an experience and that experience has helped shape who I am. And I found community and confraternity, brotherhood, sisterhood with people at Cristo Rey, and that's helped to strengthen my faith. Can you talk a little bit about and share with people your experience, what you shared with us last night, as we also think about this, that we have something to offer as brothers and sisters in Christ, but also as individuals who recognize the shared dignity of the human person. That is the cornerstone of Catholic social teaching. That's what we want to celebrate as well. But we should not at any time forestall our connection to others. And you were powerful last night. And I just want to give you an opportunity to share that with everyone else. Um, so like I mentioned, I am from a Muslim background. I was raised in Africa for 11 years of my life. And then I moved here in 2014. Um, upon moving here, I didn't know or understand anything about racism or colorism. So when I first got here, you know, there was ignorant um, conversations that I was having with my middle school friends about, you know, being raised up in Africa. I'm like, you don't understand what it's like. So don't don't say things that you don't understand and make other people have a different perspective about, you know, a certain person. So going to Cristo Rey, I decided to go to Cristo Rey. I've always been in a Catholic um, setting, so from kindergarten up to high school, and now going to college, I am going to be in a Catholic uh, school. And there's nothing that really pulls me back from my religion. It just strengthens me as a person because now I understand you know, one side of you from my own understanding, and then I understand my own religion. So it's not going to pull away from what I know. It's certainly going to expand my knowledge upon what Catholic teachings are and Islamic teachings are. So, great point. Thank you. Diamond, I want to ask you specifically, um, you're sitting next to an incredible young leader who I just was introduced to today. Um, I will say that I know Ascension Benito and his team produce some of the finest scholars in the Twin Cities. Oh, yeah. And you are clearly representative of that. But before I ask you a specific question, Diamond, you said something yesterday I thought was very important about the need for young people not to wait, not to be in a position where they're assuming. And you said it again today where you said, you know, um, the older generation sometimes will tell us, be patient or that's just the way things are. Why do we all share with everyone what you shared last night, need to develop a sense of immediacy in this moment about not only tackling racism, but I want to channel you from last night. Sexism, um, homophobia, Islamophobia. Why are all these is isms, as you put it last night, so poisonous to us as human beings? Um, because we are the generation. It's just that simple. It's that if we sit here and wait for someone to do something for us, it's never going to get done. We can't depend on the other generations to do something that we need to fix. Racism, it was not started by us, but if we really want it to happen, it can end with us. I think that... <laughs> I think it's just the time that if we sit around and wait for someone to do something for us, it will never get done. It's time for our generation and our community to come together and actually end the things that we feel is wrong. 
Great point. Thank you. And then for our youngest, but someone who I'm excited uh, to see what you're going to do, I wonder if you would share with everyone, when you hear the words activism, what comes to mind for you? Um, someone who stands up for what they believe in or what they want to happen, what they want to be the change in the world or what they would like to see different in the world. I think it's such a wonderful point because I want to emphasize this and kind of pulling everything together and before I, I ask Kevin to come up and we conclude our program today. What I love about what each of you have brought to us today is that you are living and embodying the cornerstones of what it means to be an activist, not to wait. Starting the BSU at Cristo Rey, looking at those foundations of the education that you're getting, steeped in both the intersection of faith and secular knowledge, and recognizing that we only fail when we don't heed the advice of Jackie Robinson, that a life is not important except in the impact that it has on other lives. It's powerful for me to come, to, come with you and be with you today on this one year marking of the uh, killing of George Floyd and to be able to say that out of that tragedy, here are three examples of young people, young women who say, never again for anyone. This is my community. I stand for justice. My activism doesn't end when I walk away from that protest rally. It continues in the hallways of the schools where I am working to create community, where I seek opportunities through faith and in comradeship with those that I am in community with to build them up, where I find opportunities to reinforce for people what it means to stand together for justice. And I want to emphasize something that I actually learned last night from Diamond that I think is very important. I think the three of you touched on it today, but I want to give you credit for this because I think it's powerful. I love to say that wounds produce narratives. And when people are hurt, we see that in how they present, how they show up in community. And that wound can manifest itself in all kinds of ways that go unseen. But what Diamond said last night is that we have to make those wounds visible. And when we make those wounds visible, when we are comfortable enough to be vulnerable to share with people how we're feeling. Khadija spoke to it today when she talked about the need for us to recognize that we sometimes have to go deeper than asking people, how are you feeling today? We have to push to the point where we say, no, how are we doing as a community? We have to think about as our youngest scholar, and I keep saying that because I think you're gonna take my job. I think the, the founding director of the Racial Justice Initiative, I got about what, 10 years and I'm done. But where I love where you're coming from is, all three of you, is that at the end of the day, you are already making an impact. And I think the message for all of us in this moment, but particularly for our young people who are with us today is, don't wait to make an impact. There are things that you can do today that make a difference. And don't assume that those things always involve marching in the street, writing a poem, authoring a story, showing up in community, volunteering, reading to others. Sometimes just being a really good friend is what we mean when we talk about building community. So I want to thank our panelists today. Please give them another round of applause. And I want to bring Kevin Bennett up to offer some closing remarks. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, Dr. Williams. Um, this, is a, this is a gorgeous day. Um, we couldn't ask for more. The, the landscaping is beautiful. The grass is beautiful. The trees are beautiful. The blue sky, clouds. And most importantly, we're in the presence of young people. You, you've heard Patty Strowman start us off today and uh, Dr. Williams and Principal Matias. We, we, we anchor on the voice of scholars. You hear us talk about choice for scholars and you hear us talk about agency for scholars. You know, when we talk about voice, we, we want to hear the voice of young people because we know that's how you engage them. And we need young people to be engaged in this moment and moving forward. When we talk about choice for scholars, we're talking about empowering them. Um, it's not just about what we can do for them. It's also giving them options for what they want to do for themselves and what they want to do for our community and move us forward. And when we talk about agency, 
It's a sense of efficacy. It's a sense of believing, as you've heard from our panelists, that you can make a difference. That God has given you gifts to make a difference in the world, to have impact in the world. And I truly believe what we've heard from our scholars today, they are the future. They are the future. They are the light that can take us there. So let us continue to anchor on the voices and give choice and agency to our scholars. And let's always remember that. I thank you all for gathering us with us today. And I also want to call up Father Dell to just um, help us have a moment to, to provide some closure for today. Father Dell. Before we take leave uh, today, I want to uh, once again thank um, all of you who have come uh, today. Uh, this is one of the richest 40 minutes I think I've spent in a long, long time uh, hearing uh, the, the, when Ms. Stroman mentioned that this is a sacred place, it's, been, it's become so sacred listening to the voices of you three young women um, and in this place that we love on this north side of Minneapolis that is um, in such pain uh, in these days. So thank you so much for honoring us, all of you, with your presence. I want to thank Jeb Myers, too, uh, from Cristo Rey High School uh, for your leadership in bringing us together uh, Bring Ascension and the University of St. Thomas together for this uh, lovely uh, time and challenging time. So we're we're all gonna leave here off to something, you know. Before we do that, let's just um, let's just breathe, right? Uh, let's just breathe. The the word um, breath. Uh, comes from the word inspirare, spirit, spirare, which gives us the word spirit, to inspire, for example, as these women have done for us, is to, is to blow into, <laughs> to give us breath. And the word conspire, interestingly, which we usually use in a negative sense, to conspire, there's a conspiracy, uh, well, let's let's be a conspiracy. Let's let's breathe together. To breathe with—that's what that word means. To breathe with. So before we leave this beautiful day and this beautiful space and this moment and and these uh, rich rich sharings and reflections, let's just pause and breathe together. You may close your eyes if you wish. You may wish to keep them open and look around you and to see your. Um, conspirators, <laughs> our conspirators, people with us who are here today. But let's just take a moment uh, to breathe so as not to, uh, not to forget, but indeed to remember as we, uh, as we set out to do at the beginning of this time. Breathe around us, breath of God. We need your breath for our community. We can no longer breathe the air of injustice. 
We can no longer breathe the air of indifference. We can't breathe when equality is denied to one because the result is denial for all. But breathe around us so that we can all inhale the sweet smell of liberty. Breathe around us so that all can fill their lungs with the fresh wind of freedom. Fill us with the oxygenated air that inspires us to love one another as you have loved us. Breathe around us, O oh God, because without you, we can't breathe. Let's keep breathing together, friends. God bless you. Thank you so much uh, for uh, your presence. Thank you so much for bringing us together. Dr. Williams, thank you.